Hello and welcome back to Charlie's House Call Auto Repair. Today we've got a 2009 Toyota Tacoma TRD. We're going to be doing a front wheel bearing and upper and lower ball joints out in the snow. And we have 114,754 miles on the clock and we are now doing a courtesy code scan as we usually do While this is running the health report, we're going to get to uh, jacking up the vehicle and getting the front wheel off. Let's see what we got, if anything, here. According to this, we've got nothing. Clean as a whistle. Beautiful. That's our first in a while. Here, show you what we're working with. We've got a severely torn boot on the upper, so there's no doubt that's got to be replaced. Sway bar links look good, there's no play in them, and they're stiff. Brakes are moving around. Uh, well, right off the bat. We've got loose caliper bolts. Alright. Around here, around here, the ball joint. Now, let's see if I can get you to where you can see the play in this. If ever. Just a little bit. And then, of course, we've got the, the bearing play. Now, let's get in here and start hitting all the spots that I know we're going to have to take apart. Get them a little pre soaked. We can come in and wire brush these. I don't like that. That doesn't go through. Oh, I hate bolts like that. Oh, let's see, we'll take that one out. That one we're not going to touch. This one we might have to take out. Definitely going to have to do these. There's some more evidence of bearing crunching. A little piece of metal down there. Yeah, the seal is destroyed. It's a good thing we got a new one. So, yeah, we got two bolts down on the bottom. Gotta get those lubed. But that seal, I don't know if you guys can see that well or not, but that seal is destroyed and popped out. So, yeah, we're basically going to be rebuilding this knuckle. Using a wire brush, clean up your sud. It's sticking out from your spray bar length. Get some of the rust off of it. That'll make it a little easier to extract later on. There's a quick couple things to note. We've got cotter pins instead of the big spring pin that's supposed to go here. And the spring pin that goes in here that pushes these pads apart isn't present. 
and both of these caliper bolts here were not torqued down. They were tight but not torqued and allowed for movement of the caliper. All right, let's get these caliper bolts out of here. Now we're going to be needing to take the caliper and hang the caliper on a hook. I already have the hook right here. What we're going to be doing with this hook is we're going to be putting it up here in this hole. Just like so. I'm just going to let it hang down like this so we can hang the caliper on this up and out of the way. Now we're going to take that bolt out and this bolt down here, this bolt right here. Get this out of the way. I want to separate the, uh, the brake line away from the bracket so I'm just going to pull this clip out and then we can set this all off to the side and out of the way. Stick those up and out of the way. And we're going to find a spot in here where we can push these through. We've got four boots. we got to be careful we don't damage boots, but we want to spread these brake pads apart just enough to get this a little bit more loose. The easiest place to do this is we've got these little pins that go across. Stick a screwdriver in between the top of the pin and go between the ear of the brake pad right here and the rotor. And just push gently. See, we're using one finger. Same thing down here on the bottom. Just one finger. This, this right here will relieve your pistons. It's assuming that there's nothing wrong with them, that will push them back just enough to make this come off nice and easily, and then we can hang it up on the hook. 12 millimeter bolt right here out. That loosened up nicely. Get it up here. Get that out. Nice and gentle so we don't damage any threads or break the bolt. That bolt's not too, too bad. And we will be putting a little bit of anti-seize on these when we're done because they are getting a little rusty. And that one's got anti seize on it, nice and clean. Um, that's not anti seize. What it is, but that's not anti seize. And this bolt seems, looks, and feels like it's two different sizes. There's definitely two different diameters to this bolt. And maybe that's because somewhere along the line somebody broke a bolt, put an easy out in. I don't know what the deal is here, but. We'll look at this a little more closely in a little bit. That's definitely odd. We need to get the uh, ABS line out of this. We need to get a little pair of pliers to squeeze a little locking tab to hold it in. It comes out just like that. Take the whole caliper assembly, and we can 
can hang that now up on this hook. Just like that, up and out of the way. And a little bit more closer inspection. Oh, wow. Crunchy, crunchy. Look at the, that mess. I hope this knuckle didn't get damaged. Oh, that's awful. That's completely toast. While we probably will not be able to get the sensor out, we're going to make an attempt to do so. Okay, well that's a good sign. That bolt came out nice and easy. And it's anti-seized. That's also good. I feel a little bit of wiggle. It might actually come out. Take a little bit of coercing, I think. Yeah, we got a little bit of movement in it. Now using a hammer and a chisel, we're going to try to get... Uh, God, that sounds... Surprised the wheel didn't fall off. Okay, let's get this cover off. Get in here with a chisel and just do a little tappy tap. The whole idea is we just want to create a gap somewhere that we can get in. And then we can get this cover off. Sometimes a sharper chisel helps. Easy, so we're gonna to try something a little different. Try the screwdriver. There we go. Now we got a gap. of anything in it except for a little bit of a little bit of moisture. I'm going to grab the counter pin, get the counter pin out, straighten this out as much as we can. Unless they gave us a new one, we're going to have to reuse it. I'm not a huge fan of that, but we'll see what happens. Add that torch tray. Oh, why won't that come off? There we go. Castle castle retainer off. That goes in the tray. This is supposed to be a 35 millimeter bolt. Now, being that I've already tried to figure out how to loosen this up, what we're going to do is we're going to use a 22 millimeter wrench, just because I picked it up, and one of the lug nuts. Put the lug, put the wrench, a curve facing, bend that way. Makes a lot of sense. And we'll just screw a lug nut on. And then we're going to take this, pry it against this stud right here. And we're just going to set it on top of the jack stand. We set the jack stand as far out as we can for best leverage. And back a little bit to keep this snug. So it's not going to go anywhere. And then let's see what, if we can give this a shot now. Uh. 
And just broke the breaker bar. Yay! Try again. Spare breaker bar. Try again. Hopefully this one doesn't break. Hopefully this one doesn't break. That's not too convincing. That's not too convincing. All right, let's try this. Wait and hammer. Okay, 173 foot pounds, my butt. Let's try heating it up a little. Alright, after hitting it with the torch a little bit, heating it up a little bit, we managed to get it to finally loosen up without breaking another breaker bar. Let's see if we can start walking this bearing out a little bit. Those are uh, 17 millimeter, I believe, on the back side. Yep. Now, if you get through all the rust, it is. up that way. Fortunately, those aren't all too tight. Now, let's get these, let's see, 17 millimeters. Let's fire one of my open end wrenches. Now, what you guys are going to about to see is something that's kind of new to me, but we don't have any special tools to be able to extract this hub. 
they make a tool that bolts on here that you can yank it out with they make a tool that bolts on here you can hit with a hammer that bends this whole assembly loose I don't have any of that you probably don't have any of that but you need to know how to get this hub out and I guarantee you this is not coming out without a fight but you can let the hardware that's here do the work for you I've loosened all of these bolts up about a quarter of an inch and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some oil on the threads because we're going to let these bolts instead of hold the hub in they're going to pull the hub out so we'll get them good and soaked with oil they turn nice and easy and then we're going to throw them all the way back down loose again not tight just loose throw them all the way back in the idea is, is you want to be able to get these loosened up enough that you can turn them by finger and they're really 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 rusty so it's going to be a little difficult so I'll be back as soon as I get done spinning all these back down in and loosening them up back and forth back and forth I'll just keep doing that until they're loose all right, now that we've got all the bolts back down in there they're all finger loose I'm gonna grab four nuts we're gonna take this hub out with four tiny little nuts what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your nut you know, make sure you've got a nut that's small enough that it fits within the crest of the bolt but not so big that it fits over it like this one here is flange if I put it on flange in it's too big but if I put it flange out it's just right and we're gonna set that right on top of the head of the bolt and we're gonna line this bolt up with the back side of this stud that's, that's gonna be the first one and then we'll go to the other three but you'll see how I'm doing this one I figure out where it, there it is. I'm gonna start right backing the wrench back out or the start backing the bolt back out again. And we're gonna take the nut, we're gonna put the nut between the stud and the hub. As soon as it'll fit in here, it won't fall out. It'll take a little bit of finagling to make this happen, but it'll happen. All right. Now that that bolt is out far enough that it's pinned against the stud, we're just gonna snug it just a little bit. And now we're gonna go down and do the same thing on the opposite corner with another nut. And it's not quite as loose as I would like it to be. And then we're gonna slide the nut up inside here again, same way. back that bolt out until it bottoms. Now the reason that we're using these nuts is because if you thread these bolts all the way out to where they butt up against this, it leaves about a quarter of an inch of thread on the inside. That is not sufficient enough to do this without damaging the threads of either the knuckle or the bolts. So we're, you, you're, we're taking advantage of the length of the bolt, you're extending it a little bit, and just go ahead and back that bolt out some more, tighten it up. Same thing on the other side. And as you do this, you'll see it's starting to push the, the hub out, but it hasn't freed it yet. It's just trying to separate all of this. But once you've got that tight, go back up to the top again. Again, make sure it's tight. Okay, tighten up the other one a little bit more again. I think it's getting to the point where it doesn't want to move. Okay, these are not going to hit the back of the studs, they're going to hit the back of the hub itself. So you can use some thicker nuts or whatever you want on these. The 
bigger the obstacle that you put between the bolt and the knuckle, the better off you'll be. Get that one kind of snug also. Try to not squash the nut that you've got in between. But just enough to put some pressure on it. Do the same thing again on the bottom. Go ahead and snug them all up a little bit more. cracked all of it loose. Now go ahead and back your bolts out some more. Alright, we're going to have to tap upward on it this time. out and the outer part of the hub is out now we got to get this inner part out ball bearing is probably going to fall out all over the place now we've backed this out as much as we can now we're going to try to rotate it back and forth using these ears and getting behind it and we're just going to walk it out little by little how you get it off without using a press. Look at all that metal flake. Little rollers in there. Chewed up, crumpled up. Very, very, very bad. Now I can't get the cotter pin out, so we break it off. And we're just going to take the nut off, even with, right with the cotter pin in it, it'll just rip the cotter pin out. We're replacing the ball joint and the stud anyway, so we don't need it there. Now, where's the wrench? Don't take the nut all the way off, bring it all the way to the end, bring, put it back on a couple of threads just to keep it from popping apart when you free it up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to strike the upper control arm or the upper knuckle, we're going to strike it right here and we're going to break that ball joint free. Just like that. And then we're going to go down here. We've got one bolt out of the bottom. We're going to take the other bolt out. Does that have a normal focus? It, yeah, it does. It's just 
so the camera's so cold it's not working very well. Mm -hmm. See so, you now that's a 19 on the bottom. Also. Okay, I had it moving. <laughs> That's 19 millimeter also. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. You know, I don't like the way that bolt feels. I don't like that feeling at all. What I'm going to do, I'm going to spray some penetrating oil in there. something is coming out and I'm going to tighten it back down just to work the oil into the threads out. Get that nut the rest of the way off. And the knuckle is now out. Drop one more sack. Right in the middle of the bolt. Drop the bolt. Yeah, the Oh, okay. Trey decided to drop a bunch of stuff on me. It looks like it's out of me. No. Oh. Oh. No. That's what's left of the uh, axle seal. chisel and a small hammer. Looks like a hammer, I guess. And we're going to get right in between this cover and the hub with the chisel. We're just going to tap it, try to open it up a little bit. Ugh. More carnage.